The Interdisciplinary Group of Independent Experts, GIEI, on March 2, presented to the Permanent Council of the Organization of American States, OAS, its final report featuring human rights violations in Bolivia. The report highlighted various acts of violence and human rights violations committed between September 1 and December 31, 2019 in Bolivia, following a coup d'etat against former President Evo Morales. The group of experts were sent to Bolivia by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, IACHR. They confirmed that a series of serious human rights violations were committed during the rule of the coup government led by Janine Agnes. The elections were held in Bolivia on October 18, 2019, and Building up to these elections, there was a climate of increased tensions, of increased polarization within society, right-wing forces, denouncing a lot of uh, what they alleged were irregularities. And when these elections happened, when the margin was so small between Evo Morales and Carlos Mesa, the opposition candidate, they started drumming up reports that there was electoral fraud, that there was wrongdoing, and people began to take the streets. And in the midst of this, Evo Morales, who is president, and his vice president, Alvaro Garcia Linera, were very much at the center of these violent threats. They essentially, um, given all this growing pressure, and then when the army general said that he thought that they should step down and that elections should be held again, they saw themselves forced to uh, flee to resign from their posts, um, flee out of the capital, La Paz, to Chimoré, which is the area that's the heart of Evo Morales' organizing base in Cochabamba, where the six tropics of the Federation of Coca Growers. And they were fled there and they received humanitarian assistance from Mexico and left the country. This plane was almost uh, prohibited from leaving. It was even an ordeal for them to get out but it was an urgent necessity. Evo Morales' sister's house had been burned down, growing acts of violence against them. They said in order to save the people, in order for the long term to save the people, to save Bolivian democracy, we have to leave now. And from that point, um, a, a very challenging situation developed. Um, Janine Añez, who was a opposition senator who had about 4% of the votes, she uh, declared herself the leader of, um, of the Senate. And in the absence of the president, she said that she is now the de facto leader of the country. So she declares herself president of the country and passes uh, a law saying that security forces can crack down on the growing anti-coup protest happening with uh, assured impunity. And so from the moment that the coup happens when Alvaro Garcia Linera and Evo Morales are forced to flee the country, uh, the security forces crack down on protesters. Um, they fire their guns indiscriminately at protesters. They charge at them. Um, they support the actions of the right-wing vigilantes. Um, and it really d d delves into a situation of lawlessness, of um, extreme violence against protesters and of complete um, assured impunity from the state. The report established that at least 11 rights, including the right to life, right to freedom and personal security were violated during the last quarter of 2019. It also pointed out the discrimination faced by indigenous people, the attacks against their property and the denial of their right to work under the coup installed regime. The report, which was first made public in August 2021, confirmed the occurrence of two massacres by security forces, Sinkata and Sakaba. It also marked the recurring use of torture, political persecution, illegal detention and summary executions by the state. The targets of these instances of violence were those who took to the streets in rejection of the coup and in support of the democratically elected socialist president Morales. The 470-page long report extensively referred to the breakdown of constitutional order in the country and the misuse of state's institutions for political purposes, mainly the security forces and the judiciary. It mentioned that the Supreme Decree 4078 passed by Agnes, which exempted the police and the military officials participating in repression operations from criminal responsibility, paved the way 
to state violence. The report reiterated that in the framework of a political conflict surrounded by violence, at least 37 people lost their lives in various parts of the country and hundreds received serious injuries, both physical and psychological. The report did not clarify whether there was electoral fraud or coup d'etat. However, it did acknowledge the pressure and threats suffered by Morales and other government officials and the irregularities in Agnes's self-proclamation. The group made at least 60 recommendations regarding criminal investigation processes and reparations for damages to victims. Bolivia's ambassador to the OAS, Hector Arce, expressed the country's gratitude to the expert group for the report on the acts of violence that occurred in Bolivia in 2019. He announced that Bolivia would sign an agreement with the IACHR to establish a monitoring table for the follow-up of the GIEI's recommendations.